Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, family. Let me give a shout out to all my folks out there, all my family. Welcome, 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 welcome to this darn crazy house, you guys, that we are in. Why am I straight? Huh? Maybe I should go back to using drugs. I don't understand why I am straight. Because so much craziness come up. Anyway, how's everybody doing this morning? I hope everybody's well. Hope you're taking care of yourself. I want to give a few shout outs this morning. I want to give a shout out to... Who am I shouting out today? Um... Killer B. <laughs> Killer B. Andre. What's up? Ari. How are you? Um, Tommy. Good thinking about you, bro. Hope all is well with you. Um, let's see. All the rest of my family. All of y'all out there. If I miss them. Y'all know I'm y'all in my heart, okay? Uh, Taqua, how you doing out there? Uh, let us see here. You know, because you know what? Some of y'all have been hanging in there for such a long time, and I would just be remiss if I wouldn't acknowledge you, okay? Because I really appreciate you being out there. Appreciate um, giving me the support. Um, a lot of y'all, uh, you know, like I said, if you don't donate to the channel, it helps me if you just uh, give it a like. It helps with the algorithms if you just watch the um, commercials to the end. And it's something that I'm hoping that y'all do, you know. It don't cost you nothing to like a video. It don't cost you a damn dime. People, like the video. And if it's good enough, give it a thumbs up. If it's not, give it a thumbs down. I ain't choosy. Because I'm asking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that all y'all know that I, I support y'all for being out there. Um. And I thank you for supporting me. I appreciate it. So, with that being said, am I forgetting a few people? I think we got a few people that I've missed, like um, Nate. I want to, uh, that's a new subscriber. I want to thank you. Uh, Italistic. Italistic. That's a sharp name. Hmm. I thank you for being out there as well. Okay, people, let me get on to this story. This is something that I really, really am glad I'm able to talk about because I'm right here with this. And y'all, I'm letting you know, we are still, we haven't recovered from this situation yet. I don't know. There's a lot of things that shook up the world, you know, like Katrina, for the folks down in New Orleans. You know, they suffered great, great catastrophic um, results uh, because of it. Well, in Milwaukee, we had Jeffrey Dahmer. And Jeffrey Dahmer put something on our city we haven't even been able to recover from yet. If you think it was racist before, it just turned even more uh, sinister once we realized um the special treatment that Jeffrey Dahmer got. And they in order to go back and eat people. Okay? He was a people eater. <laughs> a people damn eater. But this story that I'm about to bring you is about a guy that worked with my brother. Shout out to Jamil. One of my brothers uh, worked with this guy. And... Um, Knew he was a little weird. Okay? Well, 
of course, a lot of times you get, like I said, if when you got a spirit of this servant, a lot of things can help you out. When you don't have a spirit of this servant, a lot of times you find yourself in a bunch of uh, craziness, in a bunch of trouble. This young man here, um, worked again with my brother, and my brother had um just not a good feeling about this guy. He 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 was like, mm, I don't know. And they worked together for a little while. I mean, I think maybe less than a year, but you know, his name was. His name was, uh, 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 what was his name? Oh, jeez. We're getting everything, y'all. His name was, uh, Christopher Scarver. And most of y'all in Milwaukee know who Christopher Star Scarver was. He was the guy that bust, um, Jeffrey Dahmer in the damn head with the barbells in jail. And, um, Anderson. He bust them both. He bust Anderson in the head. He got a, a two for one. Anderson was the guy that was at the TGIFs, and he killed his wife, his pregnant wife, in the parking lot. In, anyway, the mall was never the same after that. He and tried to blame it on some black guys. In fact, he did he didn't try. He did blame it on black guys. So that's what happened to him. Anyway. After all this time, I I uh, met his son, Christopher Jr., but I never knew what happened to the dad. Serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer was done in by his uncontrollable lust for human flesh. The man who whacked him in prison 20 years ago told the Post, revealing for the first time why the cannibal had to go. Chris, the first guy, and I want y'all to know right now in those uncertain terms, I'm glad he cracked uh, Jeffrey Dahmer upside the head. He couldn't have did the black community and uh, the gay community no better service than to bust his damn head open and what he did. I don't have no remorse. Uh, he ate a few of my uh, people that I know he dismembered uh, their brothers and um, almost got a hold of one of mine. Anyway, Christopher, who fatally beat the serial killer and another inmate in 1994, said he grew up, he grew to despise, I'm sorry, not grew up, he grew to despise Dahmer because he would fashion uh, uh, severed limbs out of prison food and taunt the other inmates. See, he thought it was a damn joke. He thought it was a joke. He drizzled on packets of ketchup as blood. It was very, very unnerving. He would put them in places where people would be. Uh, we call uh, Scarver, 45 now, in a low, grovelly voice. Anyway, this article is done by uh, Jamie Scram from the New York Times. He crossed the line with some people, prisoner and prisoner staff. If y'all think those guards don't be letting this shit happen, that's going to show you how far off reality you are. <laughs> they was like, we sick of his ass too. You know, I mean, some people who are in prison are repentant. But he wasn't one of them. See, so if he had had a chance to get out, he'd have ate some more people ass in Milwaukee. That's just who he was. Okay? Hell, he had already um, uh, 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 tried to uh, kill uh, Conorak's brother before he got caught when he killed Conorak. Sent him some phone. Scarver, who arrived at Wisconsin's Columbia Correctional Institution around the same time as Dahmer, in 1992, knew right away to keep his distance safe from the serial killer. Scarver said that the madman had a per personal escort 
of at least one guard at all times when he was out of his cell because of the friction with other inmates. Everybody wanted to bust his head. Everybody wanted a piece of him because he ate somebody somebody knew. Okay? Somebody called the police and told them they loved ones was missing and the police was like, oh, you know, it's just another nigger. He's probably somewhere, you know, having fun. It's like nobody understand it. Well, it seems like it's a rash of people with uh, an open lifestyle that are being uh, missing. Oh, who gives a damn? Okay. There was no impression, he said. He said he didn't think much of him at all. I saw heated interactions between Dahmer and other prisoners from time to time. Uh, and so like a lone wolf, Scarver watched Dahmer from afar on the prison yard, but he never approached him because he didn't want to become a target of this sickening mother, uh, human being. No, this sickening animal. Uh, he never. He said he didn't want to become a target of his sickening humor. I never interacted with him, but all that changed on the morning of November 28, 1994, when Scarver doled out his vigilante justice in a gymnasium in Portage, Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, he was in Portage. Shout out to all the residents out there in Portage. Uh, 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 Lake Delton area, Dales area, all of y'all. Um, uh, uh, anyway, this dude, Scarver, oh, Fox Lake, I can't forget y'all at the, uh, a, and a third inmate, Jesse Anderson, were led unshackled to clean the bathrooms by correction officers who left them unattended. Yes, you think? Scarver, who was repulsed by the youth molesting cannibals' lust for flesh, kept his pocket in his pocket a newspaper article de detailing how Dahmer killed, dismembered, and in some cases ate 17 men and boys from 1978 to 1991. Scarver, then a 25-year-old convicted murderer, had just retrieved his mop and was filling a bucket with water when someone poked him in the back. Okay? He said, I turned around and Dahmer and Jesse were just kind of laughing under their breath, Scarver recounted. I looked right into their eyes. I couldn't tell which one it had did it. The three men then split up and Scarver followed Dahmer toward a locker staff room. Scarver grabbed a metal bar from the weight room and confronted Dahmer with the news story he had been carrying in his pocket all that time. I asked him if he did those things because I was fiercely disgusted at him. He was shocked. He was, yes, he was. Scarver said he was shocked that I confronted him. He started looking for the door pretty quick, but I blocked him, Scarver said. With two swings of the bar, Scarver crushed Dahmer's skull. <coughs> he ended up dead. I put his head down. He then casually crossed the gym, entered the locker room where Anderson 37 was working. He stopped for a second and looked around. He was looking to see if any officials was there. There was none. So pretty much the same thing happened. He got his, he got his head put out. That's what Scarver said of Anderson, Richard Anderson, who was serving a life term for killing his wife. Scarver believed that it was no accident that he ended up alone with Dahmer, since prison officials knew he hated the madman and wanted him dead. They had something to do with what took place, Scarver said. Yes, noting that the guards disappeared just before he clobbered Dahmer with 20-inch, 5-pound, with the 20-inch, 5-pound metal bar. Damn. But Scarver refused to elaborate out of fear for his own sake. I would need a good attorney to ensure there would be, not be any retaliation by Wisconsin officials 
or to get me out of any type of retaliatory position that that will put me in. Wisconsin Correction Department spokesman Joy Stav did not return calls for the comment about those claims, but an investigation following the killers determined that he acted alone. Scarver initially pleaded insanity to the murders, but later changed it to no contest. He later changed it, I'm sorry, to no contest uh, in exchange for a transfer to a federal penitentiary. He was sentenced to two life terms on top of the life sentence he was already served. So, Scarver was locked up for killing his former boss during a robbery, and, and that was in 1990. I remember that. That was right after my daughter was born. Uh, after getting fired from a job training program, at the Wisconsin Conservation Corps, Scarver started drinking heavily and said he heard voices that had called him the chosen one. He returned to his former workplace with a 25 caliber semi-automatic pistol and demanded cash from the worksite manager, John Fayette. When he only gave him $15, Scarver put, the, uh, put a bullet in his head. Um, and then the head of a worker, Stephen Loman. He shot Loman two more times before Fayan knocked the gun out of his hands and ran off. I'm sorry. Let me repeat that. He returned to his former workplace with a 25 caliber uh, uh, semi-automatic pistol, demanded cash from the site manager, John Fayan. When he only gave $15, Scarver put a bullet in the head of a worker. Steve Loman. He shot Loman two more times before Hand knocked the gun out of his hand and ran off. Hours later, cops arrested Scarver sitting on the stoop of his girlfriend's apartment. After the killings, Scarver bounced from prison to prison until he landed at his current home, Centennial Correction Facility in Canton, Colorado. Scarver says he has been evaluated by 10 to 20 prison doctors, but still don't understand uh, his mental issues. He partly blames the prison food for his insanity. I found out in my own research what the problem is, he says. Certain foods I eat cause me to have psychotic episodes. You know, bread, refined sugar, he said. Those are the main culprits. Now he spends his days writing poems for his site. He also has self-published poetry books for sale on Amazon. Huh. That's Christopher Scarver, the man responsible for um, hitting Jeffrey Dahmer in the head. Um. They got a couple more uh, photos of Jeffrey Dahmer. I never saw these before. They look horrible. Ugh. Um, this is a rare exhibit. Wow. Well, Christopher Scarver. His name is going to be forever in synonymous, misly etched with Jeffrey Dahmer. Because a lot of people wanted to do, I'm just going to make it, tell you the truth, wanted to do to Jeffrey Dahmer what Christopher had the opportunity to. All right, you guys, I just wanted to give that story uh, because I'll, nobody has heard from him since that happened. And so I was surprised to see the article of why I killed Jeff Dahmer. <laughs> okay. You like what you hear? Like, subscribe, and share the channel. I'm gonna see you in the next video.